Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous lecture, I introduced to the idea of a common gate amplifier. So to quickly review, we had previously discussed common source and common drain amplifiers. And we said both the common source and common drain amplifiers offer a very high input resistance. And we said the input resistance is generally infinity because you look into the gate of uh, the MOSFET in both these configurations. We apply the input at the gate of the MOSFET in both common source and common drain configuration. So the input resistance is infinity because the gate current normally is zero for lower frequencies. So we said the input resistance is infinity. Now in case of a common gate amplifier where the gate is the common terminal and input is at the source and output is at the drain, we said the looking in input resistance is approximately equal to 1 by gm and that is a very small number. That is what distinguishes common gate amplifier from the other two configurations. Output resistance of a common gate amplifier is also very high. We said it is close to R0. If you take just a single common a gate amplifier with RS equal to 0, we said the output resistance of a common gate amplifier is R0. And we said that is also a very high value and input resistance is very low, output resistance is very high and we said that the output current of a common gate amplifier is exactly equal to the input current of a common gate amplifier because that is simply if the input is nothing but the current flowing through the source, output is nothing but the current flowing through the drain terminal. Since the drain current and the source, the current flowing through the source is exactly the same as current flowing through the drain, we said the gain, the current gain of a common gate amplifier is 1. Therefore, a common gate amplifier is best represented by a current amplifier. For a current amplifier, input resistance should be very low, output resistance should be high and it should have some finite current gain. To be very specific, we referred to common gate amplifier as a current buffer along the same lines of a voltage buffer uh, when we called a common drain amplifier with a voltage gain of 1 we refer to that as voltage buffer so similarly we can refer a common gate amplifier as a current buffer now what i'll do here is i'll quickly revise the res I mean, re review what we did in the previous lecture when we considered the voltage source to have a finite source resistance and then we connected a finite load resistance. To quickly refresh your memory, for a common gate amplifier, we derived the expressions for input resistance to be 1 by gm, output resistance to be equal to R0 and the intrinsic gain, the unloaded gain when R is equal to 0 and R L equal to infinity as 1 plus gm R0. So that is your intrinsic gain, we call it as 1 plus gm R0 and we derived that in the previous lecture. Now we are going to derive the expressions in the presence of finite source resistance and finite load resistance. So we call that as loading conditions. In the presence of input and source and load loading conditions, how will the gain change? First an analyze the simplistic case which we already introduced in the previous class for the sake of continuity. Th that is I am going to assume R0 is inf infinity. I am going to assume that R0 is infinity and quickly derive the results for the output gain, input resistance and output resistance in this case. So first if R0 is infinity and the load resistance and source resistance are finite, so first we will calculate the input resistance. Input resistance is the resistance seen at the input of the common gate amplifier. So that will be the input resistance will still be 1 by gm itself, it is independent of RL. And that can be quickly seen here if you take a MOSFET and apply a voltage Vx at the source terminal with respect to AC ground, gate is at AC ground. So Vx is simply equal to minus Vgs and the current, let Ix be the current, we can quickly see Ix will simply be Gm Vgs current will flow from drain to source. So your Ix is equal to minus Gm Vgs which is equal to plus gm x vx. So if you take the ratio of vx by ix which is the input resistance which is simply 1 by gm or I already discussed in the last class if you have a voltage vx appearing between source to gate if vsg equal to vx then you can pictureize a current ix flowing from source to drain in the MOS device. 
So then you can directly write dx by ix as 1 by gm or the input resistance as 1 by gm. So input resistance is independent of what you connect at the load if R0 is infinity. Now the next question is finding output resistance. So we will try to find the output resistance in the presence if R0 is infinity. We will try to see what will be the output resistance. So for measuring output resistance, we short circuit the input and look at the that output terminal of interest. Now if you see this, I have assumed R0 is infinity which means there is no channel length modulation. So which means even if I am going to change the drain voltage, even if I am going to change the drain voltage, there will be no change in the drain current. You will have a change in the drain current for a change in the drain voltage only if there is channel length modulation. So which means R0 should be finite. If there is no channel length modulation or R0 is infinity, then there will be no change in the drain current for a change in the drain voltage. So therefore, even though I am applying a finite change in the drain voltage which is delta V divided by delta I, delta I is going to be 0 so this will be infinity. So your output resistance will be infinity if you ignore or not. So we found output resistance and input resistance. So now if you see input resistance is 1 by gm but if R0 is infinity your common gate amplifier better approximates a current amplifier because output resistance is becoming infinity which is which means it is a very good current amplifier. A good current amplifier, an ideal current amplifier should have zero input resistance and infinite output resistance. Input resistance is not zero, it is still very low but output resistance is infinity, it is very high. Now the third thing is the gain in the presence of the loading conditions or what we call it as the loaded gain. So unloaded gain was 1 plus gm or not that was as derived assuming there was a finite or not. Now the loaded gain we are going to derive assuming R0 equal to 0 for infinity first. It, the expressions are quite simple. After that we will complicate the analysis by adding finite R0. So first to calculate the voltage gain first I need to find this node voltage. I am going to call this as Vi. So to find the node voltage you just need to know the impedance looking into the source terminal. If I know the impedance then at the input side I can represent the circuit this way. So the input side it is going to be Rs and 1 by gm. So the input resistance I am just modeling it as 1 by gm. So the node voltage, the node voltage at this point is Vi which is simply the potential division which is 1 by gm by Rs plus 1 by gm which is nothing but gm uh, 1 by 1 plus gm Rs times Vs. So a very small fraction of the input if GMRS if your source resistance is much greater than 1 a very small fraction of the input appears across a fraction of the input voltage appears across the amplifier. Okay, You have applied Vs as the input but what appears at the amplifier's input is Vs by 1 plus GMRS which is a very small fraction of the input. That is the input voltage. Now I told you guys if you ignore or not if you apply a voltage Vi if you apply a voltage Vi between source and gate, you can imagine a current Gm Vi flowing from source to drain. So which means if you apply, so here Vi is minus Vgs. So that's why I have assumed the current to flow from, small signal current to flow from source to drain. The value of that current will be Gm Vi. Now that current will directly flow into the load, rail, load resistance and create a voltage drop of V0 equals Gm RL times Vi. Now I just need to substitute Vi using the, uh, substitute Vi with this expression. So I will simply get the expression as Gm by 1 plus Gm Rs into Rl into Vi. This is the expression for the voltage gain of uh, a common gate amplifier in the presence of both load and source resistance. So uh, the presence of source resistance here is reducing the voltage gain uh, by a factor of 1 by 1 plus GMRS. If there was no source resistance, if there was no source resistance which is if RS is equal to 0, I am applying the input directly, Vs is appearing directly across the MOSFET and you have the load resistance at the output, then the voltage gain you will have a current of GMVS flowing from source to drain. So your output voltage will simply be the output current, drain current is GMVS multiplied by RL. So GMRL into VS. So your out voltage gain will be GM times RL. 
So here the important thing is it's GM times RL can be reasonably a high voltage gain. But now the moment I introduce a source resistance, finite source resistance at this point, then I have a problem there. The source resistance is going to reduce this voltage gain. We just derived it some moments ago to GM RL divided by 1 plus GM RS. It's going to reduce the voltage gain by a factor of 1 plus GM RS. So that's the disadvantage of a common gate amplifier. The voltage gain reduces in the presence of a finite source resistance. Now if you notice this, in case of a common source amplifier, when we connected our load resistance RL and we were asked to measure the voltage gain, ignoring R0 as infinity, we said the voltage gain was minus GM RL for common source. And similarly, the voltage gain for a common drain configuration in the presence of a finite load resistance. I recommend you watch the lectures. I'll directly write the final expression. It was GM RL by 1 plus GM RL. And the interesting thing about the common source and the common uh, drain amplifier is that the input resistance, the uh, voltage gain in both the cases looked independent of RS. They were not dependent on RS because of the fact that input resistance is infinity. The input resistance was very high, which is which is where the common gate and common uh, so the common drain and common source amplifiers had an advantage over common gate. For a common gate, because it has very low input resistance, the moment I connect a source resistance and try to use this common gate as a voltage amplifier, uh, the voltage gain will be significantly reduced. The source resistance is going to reduce the voltage gain significantly. That's one problem with common gate amplifier. So generally what we do in case of common gate amplifier is that if you want to use common gate amplifier as a voltage amplifier, then there are two conditions. Either use a voltage source with very low source resistance, which may not be possible because generally you will have sources available to you will be those with very low power delivering capacity, which means your RS will be very high. I already discussed in the initial lectures. What do I mean when I say very low power delivering capacity? It simply means that the maximum power delivered by the voltage source with the source resistance RS is Vs square by 4 RS. If you have a voltage source with very low power delivering capability, so then you need an amplifier to amplify its power itself. Okay. So in that case, this is the maximum power it can deliver. It Automatically, I can also say RS is very high. Uh, if RS is very high, then the power delivery that voltage source can deliver will be very low. So that's what I mean, a low low power delivering capability, it means that source resistance is very high. So if I want to amplify a voltage with a very large source resistance, then common gate amplifier is not really a good choice for that. So in that case, we'll have to use a common source or a common drain amplifier. Or common gate amplifier does give you good voltage gain if, if the source resistance is very high. Okay, I'm um, sorry, it gives you a very good output as gain if your uh, source resistance is uh, very low. Okay, so but generally, if you have a voltage source with a high source resistance, then we don't prefer to use a common gate amplifier. So, normally, common gate amplifier is used in conjunction with it's used in conjunction with a common source or a common drain amplifier. So, I might have structures like this, I might use a common source amplifier and then a common gate amplifier in cascade. At a later stage in the in the course, we will discuss architectures like this, cascade amplifier structures like this in more detail. But now I'm just introducing you to the idea that common gate amplifier, since it has very low input resistance, if you terminate it with a finite load resistance, it's going to have a very low input resistance. Therefore, it may not be best suited for voltage amplification on its own, especially when the source resistance is very large. Therefore, it's often used in conjunction with common gate amplifier, common source or common drain. Now, if you see, if I cascade common gate in, in common source before a common gate, the input resistance here is going to be infinity. So then we can see that the voltage gain will be independent of RS. If input resistance is infinity, then the voltage gain will be independent of RS. That's an advantage of uh, having a common source amplifier preceding a common gate. Similarly, I can also have another scenario where 
I have a common drain amplifier followed by a common gate amplifier. I can also have this scenario by in both these cases I am ensuring my input resistance is infinity. So this is where common gate amplifier is used in conjunction with either of these configurations so that it its problem of low input resistance is resolved especially when amplifying voltage sources with high source resistance. So that's it those are the main salient points that we have discussed about common gate amplifier. Now I will do some rigorous analysis of common drain amplifier in the presence of R0. So which is why I push the analysis towards the end of the discussion on common gate amplifiers. So finally in case of common gate amplifiers we are now going to carry out a more rigorous analysis in the presence of R0. What will happen to the three parameters input resistance, output resistance and the voltage gain. We will now analyze this in the under loaded conditions with a finite source resistance and a finite load resistance and we will derive expressions for voltage gain, input resistance and output resistance with the source resistance and load resistance in place. So first I will consider, I will try to find the output resistance and come back to input resistance. So quickly to find the output resistance we will short circuit the input voltage and look into the drain terminal and try to measure the resistance at this point. Now this is a result I had derived in one of the previous lectures but I will quickly repeat the analysis here. So you are supposed to find I will redraw the circuit this way you are looking into the drain terminal uh, there is a resistance R0 between drain and source and an RS here gate is at ground. So I will first time when we do this analysis I will use KCLs and KVLs to derive it and after that I will try to give an intuitive reasoning for why the result that we are going to get makes intuitive sense. So quickly you draw the small signal model. So you will have GM VGS flowing from drain to source and R0 representing the output resistance. So if you apply a voltage Vx and measure the current Ix, gate is at ground. So this is your source node voltage. Now all you need to know is that your Ix is the current flowing from the input and that is going to split as two currents here and that is going to join together and flow as Ix through Rs. So I have a result here Vs the source node voltage Vs is simply equal to Ix into Rs and Vgs the gate to source voltage is Vg minus Vs. Vg is 0 minus Vs is simply gate to source voltage is simply minus of Ix times Rs. So now if you see I have uh, expressed Vs source node voltage Vgs everything in terms of Ix and so simply you can write Kirchhoff's current law at this node. So which is Ix equals Gm times Vgs plus Vx minus Vs upon R0. So substitute Vx here so you will get Ix equals minus Gm Rs into Is plus Vx minus Vs upon R0. So you can just do quick manipulation here substitute Vx, Vs as Ix Rs and uh, Vs as Ix Rs. You can I will write the final result which is Vx upon Ix will simply be equal to R0 plus Rs into 1 plus Gm R0. So I wrote this expression in a way so that it is quickly recognizable uh, and it, it, it makes intuitive sense as well. So first what happens when Rs is 0? If Rs is 0 gate is at ground you are looking into the drain. If Rs is 0 then the resistance is simply R0 itself. Gate and source are shorted is an AC ground. So the resistance itself is R0 itself. So that is what this result makes sense. If Rs is 0 it should be R0 itself. What if Rs is not 0 then how do we find the resistance? So for that I will do a very crude but it's an, it makes a lot of intuitive sense the analysis. So one thing we need to realize is if you look into the drain terminal let Ix be the current flowing through that. One thing we can quickly recognize is that the current flowing through Rs is also Ix. All I need to do now is find this node voltage. Uh, find this voltage at this point and divide that by the resistance Rs I am going to get Ix. So if I apply a node voltage Vx here what will be this node voltage in terms of Vx that is what we need to find. 
if you recall i had discussed one very interesting result in the past that a common drain amplifier has a very interesting property that in the presence of or not in the presence of or not if i apply an input voltage i said the output voltage is going to be 1 plus gm or not times pi this is the open circuit voltage or the intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier measured when rl is infinity and rs is zero so if i apply a voltage vi i said visualize a current gm vi flowing from source to drain and that current has nowhere to go at the output the output current is zero because it is open circuit so i'll just uh, redraw the circuit here exaggerate it a bit so now if the output is open circuit then the current flowing here is zero so then we will have gmvi current looping back in the path this way so this is r not so the voltage across the resistor is going to be gm r not into vi so the voltage v not which is the voltage here can be found by simply applying a kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop so the voltage here plus the voltage here plus the voltage there are three voltages this voltage is anyways at ground so this is entirely at ground this side so the voltage on this side is v naught that will be equal to this voltage gm or not vi plus vi so you will get v naught as 1 plus gm or not into vi this is what we derived in the previous lectures the interesting thing about common gate amplifier is that if i apply a voltage at the drain terminal if i apply a voltage vi at the drain terminal you will get a voltage of 1 by 1 plus gm or not times vi at the source terminal that's a very interesting result for common gate amplifier i can quickly we can quickly derive that as well let vi be the voltage here then one can quickly see there is a current which is going to flow from vi into the source into the r not and it's then it's going to flow into gm this way okay it's then going to flow into gm okay so let this node voltage be some vx we don't know what that node voltage is the current flowing through this device will be gm vx now using that using that condition i will solve this problem vi minus vx by r not which is the current flowing through r not will be exactly equal to gm vx if i apply kirchhoff's current law at this node so will be exactly equal to gm times vx and i can get the same result so i will get vx as vi by 1 plus gm or not now this is a very interesting property of a common gate amplifier generally when i say amplifier with a voltage gain a if i apply a node voltage vi here the output voltage will be a times vi amplification will happen in one direction but if i apply a voltage vi at the output the input voltage here is undefined you cannot define that so the amplification doesn't happen in this direction this holds true for common source and common drain amplifiers if you apply input at drain terminal in common source or if you apply input at source terminal in common drain you cannot expect change to happen at the input you will see no in change at the input so that's the general wisdom but in case of a common gate amplifier you will actually see a very interesting case very interesting case that if you indeed apply a voltage vi at the input you will get output as vi by a not the input voltage will be vi by a not so that's what you see in common gate amplifier and that property happens because of the presence of r not r not is the connection between input and output if you see common uh, source and common drain in both the cases there is no physical electrical contact between source and drain input and output it here it is gate and drain there is no connection there any any passive element connecting the two similarly there is no passive element connecting source input and output in common drain as well but in common gate amplifier there is a resistance r not which is connecting input and output now this r not is what that brings the bilateral property of a common gate amplifier which means amplification can happen on either directions so i'm using the word amplification even for this case this is not really amplification it's attenuation the signal is getting attenuated but i'm just using the word for, for the sake of consistency so i'm just telling you that it can amplify in either directions but in other direction it's going to give you a lower gain in fact it will be much lower than one now using this i'm going to solve this problem of output resistance so if i apply 
a voltage Vx at the drain terminal, I am going to write that approximately the node voltage at this point is going to be Vx upon 1 plus Gm or not. And that we said, you know the voltage, that we said is the node source voltage. Once you know the source voltage, divide the source voltage which is Vx by 1 plus Gm or not by Rs. So I am multiplying it by Rs here. That will be your Ix itself. So your Ix will now be equal to Vx by 1 plus Gm R0 times Rs. So Vx by Ix is nothing but 1 plus Gm R0 times Rs. Now here I made a small approximation. The approximation is that when I derived the result previously, 1 by, I mean previously when I applied a voltage here and wrote an expression here, Rl was infinity, there was no Rl there. But now there is a Rl present here. But I am making an assumption this RL is really very large. Then I can approximate RS. I am sorry, this is RS. Uh, source resistance RS is so large that I can make this approximation approximately. It looks like an open circuit. So the voltage is given by Vx by 1 plus Gm or not. So it is an approximation. Only then I got this result. So now I will write the total output expression. It is R0 plus RS into 1 plus Gm R0. The first term I told you guys that it can be intuitively seen that if Rs is 0, Rs is 0, I am looking at the drain terminal, its input resistance is going to be, the output resistance is going to be R0. So this makes sense. If I make Rs 0, you should get R0. If you assume Rs is really large, then I gave you an intuitive way of how to derive the output resistance without resorting to KZLs and KVLs, many KZLs and KVLs or the brute force method. And we looked at it intuitively, the voltage here should be 1 by Gm or not times this. So the current can be found from that and we said it is Rs into 1 plus Gm or not. The important thing to observe here is that the input resistance, uh, the output resistance of this amplifier is a multiplied version of Rs. It looks like as though Rs is getting amplified when I look at the drain terminal. That's it. So that's the output resistance of a common gate amplifier if you include or not. Next, I'll derive the input resistance of a common gate amplifier when I'm going, I'm going to derive the input resistance in the presence of a finite load resistance. How will that change? Now, in case of input resistance, input resistance, I'm going to again derive this result using a simple approximation. If I apply a voltage Vx, I need to find the current Ix flowing in the circuit in terms of Vx, then I can easily find what will be my output resist input resistance. To find this, I can quickly use this fact that the current flowing here is also exactly same as the current flowing at the input. So the voltage here, I will call it as V0 is simply Ix times Rl. So if I know V0, if I know what is the output voltage in terms of Vx, then all I need to do is divide V0 by Rl that's going to give me Ix. So if I represent V0 in terms of Vx, then my problem is solved. I can get an expression for the input resistance. Okay, then I'll, I can find out Vx by Ix from this expression. So first step, I'll try to find V0. So to do that, I have a problem with zero source resistance, but there is a finite R0. R0 is finite. Then how do I find the voltage gain from the source end to the drain end. To do that, I'll resort to using Thevenin equivalent. That makes the analysis much simpler. So I'll take this part of the circuit and represent by its Thevenin equivalent. If I find the Thevenin equivalent, at the input side, I should open circuit my load resistance. Load resistance should be made infinity by the output side and find the open circuit voltage. That's nothing but the intrinsic gain times the input voltage. So if I, I already discussed that if you open circuit drain and apply input at the source, the voltage gain is 1 plus Gm or not into Vi. So I can represent this as a voltage source of value 1 plus Gm or not into Vi. The next thing is I need to find the Thevenin resistance for it. I need to short circuit the input and look at the output. Here when I short circuit the input Vgs is 0, drain is at ground, source is at ground and I am looking at the sorry, gate is at ground, source is at ground and I am looking at the drain terminal. So the resistance is simply R0. So this is R0. And at the output side you are going to have a load resistance R. So this is the Thevenin representation of this circuit with a finite load resistance and I have applied the input at the source. Now I can find out the output voltage simply by potential division. So which will be RL by 
R L plus R naught into uh, R L plus R L plus R naught into one plus G M R naught. This is your output voltage for the circuit. Now I told you guys, if you know the output voltage, then you can easily calculate the output current. So the output voltage at this node is known to us. If you know that, then you can calculate the current I X flowing at the output. That I X is simply your I X is simply. I'm sorry, here I've written it as V I. This input voltage is V X. So if I apply V X here, uh, the output voltage is here given by R L by R L plus R naught. Into one plus G M R naught times V X. Okay, so I've written it as uh, if I apply input voltage V X, this is the voltage you are going to get at the output. We just derived that. Now to find I X, all I need to do is divide this result by R L. If I divide this, then I go, you know the output voltage divided by resistance, you get the current. So this by R L will be one plus G M R naught upon R L plus R naught into V X. This is your Output current I X. Now I said at the input I X is also the input current, so therefore the input resistance is given by V X by I X. This is your input resistance. So V X by I X, that's your input resistance, is simply given by R L plus R naught upon one plus G M R naught. Now this is the exact expression for the input resistance in the presence of R L. Now we can quickly see. If I assume R L is zero, I'm going to write this expression as R naught by one plus G M R naught plus R L by one plus G M R naught. So this can this is nothing but the first term is nothing but R naught in parallel with one by G M plus R L by one plus G M R naught. This result should make intuitive sense because if I make R L as zero, if I make R L as zero. Then the looking and input resistance are in. So I'll try to explain why does this result make intuitive sense. First, let's look at the resistance here, the input resistance when R L is made zero. If R L is made zero, intuitively you can see that the resistance is simply you're looking into the source terminal, drain is ground, gate is ground, so it will be one by G M parallel R naught. You'll have two paths for current. G M V I will flow here and. Uh, V I minus V I by R naught will flow through this. You can easily write it as one by G M plus parallel R naught. So that's what we have in the first term. It so it makes sense. If I substitute R L as zero, you get only the first term. The second case is to find when I make R L as infinity. If I make R L as infinity, what will be the output input resistance? If I make R L as infinity, if I look at the circuit, the current drawn here is same as the output current. But since we have open circuit with output node, this current is going to be zero. If this current is zero, the input current is also zero. So even though you are applying a finite voltage V X, the current drawn from the input I X is zero. So therefore, V X by I X will be equal to infinity. So therefore, your input resistance is infinity. So if R L is infinity, then input resistance is infinity. That's what intuition is telling us. We just analyzed the limiting case, and we showed that it is infinity, and you can see that from equation as well. If you make R L as infinity, the input resistance is Infinity. So, um, just one more point to note here is that even though the input current is zero, the input current is zero, but you should understand there is some finite current flowing in the MOSFET. So, I have applied a voltage V I here. Uh, a current of G M V I is flowing through the MOSFET through source and drain, but it is looping around R naught and flowing in a loop like this. So, no current enters this. No current leaves this. Okay, this terminal. Okay, but still the current GMVI is going to loop in this R naught and the MOSFET itself. So the, it's actually flowing within the loop like this. It's going to loop around here in this circuit, and so that no current will be drawn from the input, nothing will flow at the output as well. So that's it. I have derived an expression for input resistance, output resistance, and finally now I'm ready to derive the expression for voltage gain. So I'll derive the expression for voltage gain in terms of input resistances and output resistances. So it because now that we know how to derive input and what are the expressions for input and output resistances, I will derive the expression for the voltage gain V naught by V s in terms of R in and R out. To do that, 
first i'll take uh, i'll try to express in terms of rn and rl so to derive that so one thing that you need to observe is that if i know the input current let ii be the input current drawn from the input that is vs if you see here the current splits between the mosfet and r0 and finally the output current is also equal to ii i0 is exactly equal to ii so if i find out ii in terms of vs then your output voltage is simply ii times rl i mean it is i0 times rl but since i0 is equal to ii your output voltage is ii times rl so if i find out ii in terms of vis vs then i can easily find voltage gain from that now if you quickly notice this circuit here we just derived an expression what happens to the input resistance in the presence of rl we derived an expression for it so let r in be the input resistance then if you apply a kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop quickly we can measure the current i i will be simply given by vs upon rs plus r in r in is the input resistance seen here so vs by rs plus r in will give the input current so your output voltage will simply be i'll substitute this in this expression vs upon rs plus r in times r l so v not by vs the voltage gain is simply r l by rs plus r in this is the expression for voltage gain of a common gate amplifier in terms of input resistance and of course load and source resistance as well now keep in mind your input resistance depends upon load resistance as well so your input resistance is r not by 1 plus gm r not or you know r not parallel 1 by gm plus r l by 1 plus gm r not so the input resistance is a reduced version of load resistance plus 1 by gm parallel r not this is the expression for voltage gain in terms of rl the other expression we am going to derive in terms of r out so now i'm going to derive the expression for the voltage gain in terms of r out that's also possible so to derive that what i'll do is that i'll try to first draw a thevenin equivalent for this part of the circuit i'm going to represent this part of the circuit by its thevenin equivalent so first for thevenin equivalent you'll have to do two things first measure the open circuit voltage i'm going to open circuit this node r not is present so i'm explicitly showing r not not in the small signal model but here itself and we'll find out what is the open circuit voltage if you open circuit the output node and try to measure the open circuit voltage first quickly we can see that the output current here is zero because it's open circuit which means i can say that the input current is also zero because it's the same as the output current if the input current is zero the voltage drop across as rs is zero so this node voltage the input voltage of the gate amplifier vi will be equal to vs itself now you are applying a node voltage vs here so the circuit reduces to something like this so you have applied a node voltage vs at the source terminal so the drain terminal node voltage will simply be equal to 1 plus gm r not into vs this is something we derived already the output open circuit voltage this is like an intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier uh, with rl as infinity it will be 1 plus gm r not into vs so that's your open circuit voltage it is independent of rs the next step is to find the output resistance so to find the output resistance in this configuration which has a source resistance and i'm now looking at the output terminal which happens to be the drain terminal and i'll quickly short circuit the source and try to measure the resistance seen here we derived an expression for this few moments ago this is nothing but the output resistance of a common gate amplifier in the presence of rs your r out is simply equal to r not plus 1 plus gm r not times rs this is the expression we derived some times ago some time ago so this is your output resistance so finally i have a thevenin representation for this circuit so it will be 1 plus gm r not times vi with an output resistance given by this value and this will be connected to the load resistance rl so now the output voltage across the load resistance v not can be written as 1 plus gm r not into vi multiplied by rl by 
R L plus R out. So the voltage gain A V is simply one plus G M R naught divided by R L plus R out. Okay, into R L. So now if you see there is no uh, the the value R S doesn't figure in this equation at all. So but you should notice that R out here. R out here has the dependence of R S. Your R out here is simply R naught into R S plus one plus G M R naught. So the dependence of R S is captured in the output resistance. So finally, to summarize, I'll write the general expression for a voltage gain of a common gate amplifier in the presence of both load and source resistances. Is given that it has two different forms. The first form. Is R L divided by R S plus R in. We also wrote other form, which is in terms of the intrinsic gain, one plus G M R naught into R L by R L plus R out, where R in is given by the input resistance is given by input resistance depends on the load resistance, output resistance depends on the source resistance. So input resistance is given by R naught parallel one by G M or plus. R L divided by one plus G M R naught, and the output resistance is given by R naught plus R S into one plus G M R naught. These are the expressions for input and output resistances, and these are the expressions for the voltage gains in case of a common common gate amplifier with R naught. I told you guys in the beginning itself that the expressions do get a little bit more complicated. Uh, once we include R not in the analysis, the important thing to see here is that for a common gate amplifier, which is the major source of gain reduction, is your R S. Because of your R S source resistance, because of finite source resistance, if you see, you will you will end up having a lower gain in a in case of a common gate amplifier. Your source resistance is the main culprit, which reduces the gain in a common gate amplifier so that's it about this lecture in the next lecture i'll try to quickly present some videos or lectures on how to intuitively analyze common source and common gate amplifiers or their equivalents in bjt's which is common emitter and common base amplifiers thank you